Uh, I'm Brian. I'm Josh O'Hara. Okay, we're going to talk to you guys about our uh, RGB LED controller, which which is sort of inspired by, have any of you guys seen uh, Philips Ambilight technology? Like the TVs, the big ones they have, whatever is uh, on the screen, and it has lights around the outside of it, and it outputs whatever's on the screen, so it sort of projects on the wall to make it uh, give you the effect that you're viewing a bigger screen than it actually is. So that's sort of what uh, our, our goal was and sort of what it was taken from. The idea. Okay, so yeah, our requirements were uh, we wanted to use pulse width modulation uh, from the Nexus board. We had three output signals, one to control each color of the LEDs. Because uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the RGB LEDs. It's basically like three LEDs in one, a red, green, and a blue. And uh, by adjusting the brightness of each one, you can create a variety of colors. Like, I mean, just like mixing and matching. Like, if you've ever done like Photoshop, how you have like the RGB sliders from zero to two fifty five, and you adjust the color that way. Um, and we actually use pulse width modulation to turn on and off the LEDs faster than the human eye can see. So it's just like, you know, it's on for a certain amount of time, and the the, or the higher the LED cycle, the brighter the LED will be. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, and we also wanted to output the color to a computer screen using a VGA, a VGA connector, and so, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the basic requirements of it, and we use a bunch of control switches, we have another set of four switches which sort of controls so you can manually set. Uh, the color, either red, green, or blue, you can set each of those individually, or you can uh, turn off that select bit, and then you can have up to 256 presets, uh, like animations to be run on the LEDs, so say you want strobes or fades or different things to work with it, stuff like that, so that's the control line. Yeah, we only did like 10 or 15 presets. Just to prove a point. Because, yeah, you guys get the idea, we probably don't have time to demo for all of it. Uh, so this is the basic uh, circuit diagram. Uh, where you see these LEDs, there's actually 16, uh, actually 32 in parallel where each of these are. Um, but you know, this gives you the idea, like if it were just so this one is a single, single LED. This yeah, is so. Um, uh, the power supply right here is an external power supply, five volts. And these three signals are the pulse width modulated signals coming from the Nexus board. Uh, a couple problems we ran into designing was that uh, we weren't getting a high enough voltage out of the um, out of the Nexus board to either run the LEDs directly or even turn on and off the gate of the MOSFETs. So these are at four volts. The gate voltage needs to be in between, anywhere between two and four. So if you have it on the upper end of the four, then you're going to get your maximum. Yeah, the, um, okay, so what we did instead was uh, we used these uh, external BJTs to, as like an amplifier, basically. And uh, they're connected to these pull-up resistors. So basically, when you get a low signal out of the, out of the pulse with modulated uh, control signals, then that's going to turn off this BJT. And uh, so there's going to be no current flowing through here, and the gate is going to be connected to uh, VDD, and when you turn, when you have a high signal out of there, it's going to turn this on and actually ground the MOSFET. It's all flipped. So yeah, so an on, like a high from the controller actually turns off the LEDs. Um, we tried using our uh, power supply from IMD 156, uh, but our total project needs probably around about two amps to source the current LEDs, so that power supply immediately yeah, like as soon as we plugged it in, the LED just faded out. The power supply did something funny, so we ended up using an external computer power supply to uh, source the current to it. So, yeah, that's hardware. Okay, and then um, the, the software part of it is um, basically the, the base setup for the function generator lab, where you have um, the, the, time, the timer counters doing frequency generators. And instead of doing um, interrupts off of that, you use the PWM output of the timer so that you can enable uh, get your three different RGB pulses out of it. And there's also an interrupt. This, there's a fourth counter that acts as the, um, the output frequency generator, which is pretty much how fast you want your LEDs to be outputting the color.
colors that you're sending it. Um, so it's anywhere from 30, um, 30 hertz to 60 hertz and then 1,000 hertz just so you can see some of the differences we'll show you later. And then we also have an IP core that we created that uses the uh, external um, BHDL file that they supplied us and then we sort of modified it a little bit so that it sends it all black um, RGB when it's on the blank portion of the screen because it has to wrap back around. That was one of the big problems I think uh, everyone was having with the GA display. So we did that and then linked it into microblaze and enabled it to send it an RGB value and then the BHDL for the process it outside of the software part of it. And then we just had a couple of functions. The main function was gen PWM, which generates the specified PWM signal that we want to specify colors. Uh, set out the function I talked about. And then the pull function just pulls all of the switches and buttons. It does debouncing. It also uh, it also acts as like an asynchronous interrupt, so it tells it when it needs to stop doing that certain preset and go on to something else. And uh, all the LCD functions are the same for all the previous labs. And uh, that's basically it for the software. And then um, we weren't really sure what this slide was supposed to be for, but we can sort of talk about a little bit of our the single LED. And um, uh, yeah, we did that like the first week after, um, like after our last lab, we got the pulse width modulation for just like a red LED working. But uh, one of the problems we ran into when we started using the RGB LEDs was that they're um, common anode instead of on cathodes, so like, uh, yeah. And also the voltages were a bit, a bit different for the single LED because we were able to drive the single LED with the Nexus board, but for RGB LEDs, because they're 20 milliamps per color, that's 60 milliamps per LED, like single LED, and there's just no way that the Nexus board is going to be able to power all Yeah, that. 16 per bar times two bars. So it's, yeah. like, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of current, and that's where we ran into problems. And sort of, after we had all the external circuitry, that was fine. And then we uh, went to the task of trying to get the VGA out of it and just sort of mirror it. And it only does, we're kind of disappointed because the VGA will... I'm just going to start with, um, the screen should just mirror whatever the LED is. So that's the VGA green. And then this is, there's one switch that controls the, the master on it. So if you set this switch, that means you're in set mode. So these three switches correspond to the, um, if you want to set the individual colors via this, the switches, so you get 8-bit color uh, things. So this is all at zero. So if you want to start increasing it, uh, the red will start going up and then to the brightest one. So that would be the red. So the red is set and then if you go back and you know, reset the switches, you can set the blue to whatever you want. And the same with the green, so that would be the yellow. And then if you do the, give the blue the same color, you can adjust whatever, however you like it. Um, so that's the manual set mode. And then if you want to go back into preset mode, you just turn off the master control switch and it'll go back to default. And then the display the, an extra feature was also the LCD, which displays the RGB value of the current thing, so it says 0, 0255, 0. And uh, so the first, the first um, preset is just all white, it turns all the LEDs on in the screen white, and it'll also, it'll, it'll also display the, the, what, what's, what the preset is right now, so that's the default. And then this one would be a fade to a red, so it's fading Roy G. Bib right now. And if you want to speed it up a little bit, we have buttons that actually increase the the frequency of the output, so it'll go a little bit faster. There's 1500 hertz, there's 60 hertz, and then there's a slower 30 hertz, which is, it goes so slow. That's mainly for the strobing effect, so we'll keep it on the fast one for those. Um, then there's also a fade backwards, fades it backwards, and then there's a warm fade, which is like a red, orange, yellow fade, and then a cool fade. <laughs> a different one. So you can have a bunch of different presets and just program it in. Program it in. And then um, starting with this one, I think it's the strobe. So this is a club strobe, <laughs> which sort of goes on the screen, but the LEDs are actually outputting faster than the screen is able to. So if you slow it down, you'll be able to see it on the LEDs, but not the screen um, due to the, the timings. So I mean, you could speed up your, your pulses too. And that's why we had the, this is at 30 hertz. So that is, oh, LEDs can strobe, I and mean, that's like a blue strobe. And you could do a Cal Poly strobe, which is like <laughs> yellow, yellow, and green. And then go back to that one, where you can do a blue strobe. A couple different ones. And again, the screen will actually keep up if you turn up the frequency. So that's basically it. <coughs>